Myself, I'm Arthur Maxara. I currently work at Flying Wild Hawk. I'm also a board member for the Polish uh, Indie Games Foundation. We help people out, small indies, larger indies. Uh, actually, I started working as a QA tester. Uh, I was working in a large uh, international company, working on titles such as WRC3, Gran Turismo 5. Then I moved to Flying Wild Hawk. I started also as a QA tester in the company. I was the first one. Uh, I was working on Hard Reset. It was our first game. Uh, we published it in 2011. Uh, then I moved to level design. I, I was one of the three level designers for Shadow Warrior 1. Uh, it was a reimagining of the classic game from 3D Realms, so the guys who did Duke Nukem. Uh, and eventually I became the pr a producer uh, in our company for uh, the console versions of Shadow Warrior and Hard Reset. So th these are actually the titles I worked on. So it's pretty <laughs> lengthy list. And let's get back. I will show you some videos about the history of Polish game dev. We will start in the late 60s and we will finish in the 90s and then I'll start. Yeah. And I start with my presentation. There are like three videos, uh, each is five minutes long. I hope I won't bore you to death with them. Specialists only. 
And this mostly thanks to a better availability of microcomputer support, such as ZX Spectrum, Atari XL, XC, or Commodore 64. Young people became interested en masse in the possibilities of the new computer technologies. They started as gamers, but soon became interested in creating their own games. The birth of Computer Limited Press had a significant role in the educational process, especially the most important computer press title of the late 80s, Bytech. It became the most important source of information about new technologies, and also covered programming tutorials and courses, and even whole code tables for basic programs. You had to manually rewrite them. This was the true beginning of the first wave of Polish games and developers. They started with rewriting programs published in books and press, which they distributed at computer markets, a kind of bazaar where fans of computer games came with their creations to exchange their games and programs, or simply to buy them from others. These were also the places to exchange their knowledge and to meet new people. The commercial game market was non-existent in Poland. There was also no copyright law protecting intellectual properties of the creators. Only a small amount of people believed that creating video games could be a way of making a living, or something more than just an exotic hobby. The first sign of upcoming changes was when the National Publishing Agency started publishing. The first tapes with educational software were created by Polish programmers in 1986. It was also the year when Marcin Borkowski, one of the editors of the legendary Biotech magazine, first tried to publish and sell his Pandora's Box text adventure game for the ZX Spectrum. The true change was yet to come in 1989. So guys, actually, what you see, we were the first people to invent something like Torrents because people were rewriting the games, the code that was published in the Bytech magazine into their computers and they had games. <laughs> Let's go with later 80s. started to change in Poland, the economy, the politics, and the social life. Democrats took over the government thanks to a peaceful revolution. It was a time of great economic changes. One of these changes was the introduction of a bill that allowed Polish entrepreneurs to start their own companies. Despite technological sanctions, lack of investors, lack of financing, and a total lack of copyright laws, there were people in Poland who wanted to create professional game development studios. Janusz Pels and Tomasz Pazdan were just two of them. They were both 19-year-old high school students when they started LK Avalon. Their first game, Robo, released on 8-bit Atari computers, already showed great potential. 8-bit Atari was already outdated hardware, but thanks to this, Poland was allowed to import this system in the late 1980s, and Atari computers became hugely popular in Poland. No Western countries were developing since they had moved on to different platforms. So this created an opportunity for the Polish market. Filling this void with Polish games allowed the Polish developers to grow. Bravo is the best example of a successful Polish game. It's a mix between Sokoban and Boulder Dash. To further promote their games, LK Avalon started to publish a magazine called Atari Secrets. You would find programming tutorials and listings of software to rewrite by yourself. It also included new software reviews while educating people as to why they should buy genuine copies from publishers and not pirated versions from bazaars. It turned out very soon that it was possible to develop entertaining and ambitious games in Poland and that players were willing to support the developers and publishers with their money. LK Avalon took advantage of this fact. Their next games were Mission Shark, a platforming game, and Fred, an interesting arcade game about a caveman. Both games were also published in Western European countries. The company also published other independent developers, people who create games at home in their spare time. It was the first time that they didn't need to go to a bazaar to sell their games themselves. Finally, somebody gave them help to publish their games in a professional way. LK Avalon's publishing portfolio quickly grew to several dozen games, and the sales of some titles were counted in tens of thousands. Avalon was not the only company to thrive. Warsaw-based Mirage Software plans to conquer the 8-bit market. Colony is a text-based economy sim where you develop a space colony. 
The SF was established in Gdansk with their first hit game, Swords of Valkyr, a fantasy labyrinth game starring the midget Valkyr as the main protagonist. In 1991, the technology embargo, first being eased a year before, was finally lifted. Soon, it became apparent that the 8-bit era was coming to an end in Poland, and the newly established companies had to start developing their titles for more modern hardware, especially for the vastly popular Amiga computers and the PC, although the PC was still not as popular as other cheaper systems. This was also the first time that Polish developers had to compete with Western studios that were still creating software for those platforms. To compete with Western-developed games, Polish developers helped to make their games more attractive for Polish gamers. This led to creating games with Polish elements set in Poland. One of the best examples of this approach is Franco, The Crazy Revenge, a beat-em-up where the main hero fights on the streets of Szczecin, one of the cities in Poland. The most important Polish game developed for the Amiga system was Citadel, a response to the cult classic PC game Doom. It was believed that 16-bit computers were underpowered to run a 3D game, but a few Polish 3D freaks decided to force their Amigas to run a 3D shooter. Citadel, created by four people in Virtual Design Studio, was the first Doom clone for Amiga that was a fully-fledged game. Even though Citadel was an important game and a successful product, it didn't have much impact on the gaming industry. After Commodore went bankrupt, personal computers became the leader of the technology race, and the age of Amiga came to an end in Poland. This also meant the end of developers' hobbyists. Without proper funding, they simply couldn't create games that would compete with titles from large publishers on their own. This also marked the end of Polish games meant only for Polish gamers. Another time of change approached, a time when Polish developers had to become professional, and Polish games had to compete on the global market. So actually in the 90s we did all the games for the Polish market, that there was no option to sell them abroad, even when people got them somehow abroad, they were probably pirated. Now we go into the 90s. Accident, the world is now populated only by women. You 
to our task to make the world as it was before. The new team consisted mostly of people who previously worked in Atari Secrets magazine. Yoshi joined them after leaving Chaos Works. AD 2044 was a high quality title, and the developers had no problem finding a publisher, Flare Software. Thanks to the support shown to LK Avalon by publishers such as Dreamcatcher Interactive and Project 2, the company decided to develop more PC titles with a larger project scope. Their focus became futuristic adventure games set on distant worlds, where heroes are tasked with solving puzzles and uncovering secrets of bizarre civilizations. Published in 1998, Reach, Face the Unknown, was one such game. The second one being Schism, Mysterious Journey, released in 2001. Schism was also the last game developed by LK Avalon. They decided that developing games was too big a financial risk because the market was unstable. They decided to focus on educational programs. The development team left to create their own studio, Detalion, and continued to work on adventure games. In 2003, they released a sequel to Schism, Mysterious Journey 2, Chameleon. Their second game, Sentinel, Descendants in Time is also their last game. Not so loud. I'm trying to sleep. I don't believe you, Dormus. Dreamcatcher's financial troubles forced them to cancel their upcoming title. It wasn't the end for the Italian crew. Their knowledge and skills were something that was needed in the new wave of Polish studios. CD Projekt Red, People Can Fly, and City Interactive. So yeah, this is how the 80s and 90s looked like. And fast forward, we are in the 2000s. So this is the company I work in, it's called Flying Wild Hog. Uh, we were established in 2009. There were only six people uh, when the company started. We had four programmers and two graphic artists. Uh, the guys wrote their own engine, it's called Roadhog Engine. All our FPS titles run on it. Uh, the only exception was the Juju game. It is a platformer meant for children. Uh, our company has a flat structure, so there are leads in each uh, department, but still we take all decisions democratically. Uh, so there is this C our CEO, Michał, uh, who runs the company, and he's also a programmer, so he sits with everybody in the office. He, he doesn't have a separate room uh, and there is everybody else so uh, currently we have over 100 people 20 of them are in Krakow it's our second office open two years ago and we have over 80 people working in Warsaw uh, Warsaw is our main studio and the studio responsible for Hard Reset, Shadow Warrior, Shadow Warrior 2 and Juju uh, Krakow is now working on their own title uh, our games were published by Devolver Digital, so the publisher who published Hotline Miami, Serious Sam, all the like premium indie titles. And also the second brand, Gambitious Digital Entertainment, uh, we published with them uh, Hard Reset Redux. These are our games, so probably you know some of them. And this is how our office look, looks like. So this is the room where uh, it's a pretty old photo. It was the room for our QA and level designers. You can see uh, those uh, papers on the wall. This is like the game flow for Hard Reset. They are still there in the office now. Yeah, this is our uh, lunch for Shadow Warrior 2. So yeah, the, the Devolver guys brought, uh, brought some beer for us and pizzas. This is our kitchen. This is one of the room where the graphic artists sit. Oh, okay, so enough about Flying Wild Hawk. Uh, we have over 300 studios in Poland now. It started a long time ago, as you saw. Uh, we had this seed uh, capital of developers, the old ones. Uh, hey, guys. And as companies go, people leave the companies, people get fired. Uh, some of them start their own companies and this is what made uh, the game dev uh, industry so large in Poland. So 
Uh, we have big companies like CD Projekt Red, Techland, Artifacts Mundi, our company, People Can Fly, CI Games, uh, and we have loads of smaller studios. I will show you later the, the list because it's so huge. We still haven't written down every, each and every developer because it, it's really hard to get to them. And each day we just see that there are new projects popping up. We have several groups on Facebook and uh, like it's, it's really uh, now it's a boom for game developers in Poland. So people are starting start to work on their own projects because the, the tools are uh, way are more approachable than they were 20 years ago. Most of the companies started writing their own engines. Uh, and now you have Unity that is for free. We never had that before. Either you decided to do your own engine or you had to pay $1 million for Unreal. <laughs> so we have a strong indie scene and a totally unique uh, game dev culture. I will talk about this later. So, do anybody of you know Sauce? One person, okay. So he's one of the most famous Polish indie developers. Uh, he's one guy making crazy games, like really crazy. Uh, Mark Pixel was his, his first game. It was in times when still Steam was closed off for developers and you either had to be a large company, there was no option to publish your games if you were an indie developer. But he was the first, uh, Mark Pixel was the first game that uh, got to Steam uh, via Greenlight and it was heavily pirated. So Sauce <laughs> went to Pirate Bay put MacPixel there himself uh, and he just wrote, guys, this is my game. If you don't have money, uh, download it, feel, feel free. But, you know, I worked for, for it, like, on it, like, for half a year. And this is, this is my uh, PayPal account. If you feel any urge to, to pay me, it would be great. So, actually, uh, people moved from uh, the torrent sites to Steam and bought as many as 500,000 copies of MacPixel. The game is pretty cheap because it started like maybe for two dollars but still it's a lot of money for one person. <laughs> uh, oh, the pictures don't load. Them. I wanted to show you the pictures of each company. <laughs> okay, I will show you it later. 60 seconds, Robot Gentleman. These guys are based in Poznan. Uh, there are only two of them, and they created an indie title 60 seconds. <laughs> it's in the first part of game, you have to run around the house because you have 60 seconds before a nuclear bomb uh, explodes. You just have to grab all the necessary things. If you go to the bunker, uh, the second part of the game starts, and actually it's a uh, text-driven survival game. So you have to take decisions that are written. There's not really much graphics and you have to survive as, m as long as you can. So 60 seconds also sold really good for two people, 300,000 on Steam, it's great. Uh, the guys are currently developing Stray, it's their new game, I will sh maybe show you there. Do we have internet here? I will show you the trailer. So yeah, I bet this will be totally different from 60 seconds, but the first game allowed them to uh, get the funds and get the security for this. Okay. Great. Oh, 
Uh, also, they have a unique dress code. They always wear those top hats with glasses, steampunk glasses, always vests and white shirts, so that they are like true gentlemen. Okay, Vile Monarch. Vile Monarch actually are based in the same building that Flying Wild Hog is. They are on the second floor, we are on the sixth one. Uh, the guys, uh, two of the founders of the company were working previously at 11-bit studios. Uh, one of them was a programmer and the second one was designer for this war of mine. Uh, the guy, the, their first project was uh, called Crush Your Enemies. Uh, the second one actually was developed during a game jam. I will show you a video about this game jam because it's really special. In Poland we have, uh, there is, from what I know, the only jam that professional companies meet at one of the company's uh, headquarters. And we stay there for two days developing projects, but uh, the teams are divided by the companies. So Flying Wild Hawk team, uh, by the Monarch team, and one of their games that uh, made second place in the first year, Hawks won, certainly in the first year, uh, was called Osar, and it was an insult simulator. Uh, the topic of the jam uh, was uh, this pirate is no more. It's a sketch from uh, Monty Python, Monty Python's Flying Cir Circus, and it was uh, the game is based on uh, it's like a card game. And you have to connect words and phrases in English to insult your, uh, the second person. Uh, so they started in 2015. During two years, they grew up to 15 people. And they will grow even more. Uh, mostly they are using Unity. Oh, again, no picture. Sorry. 11-bit studios. This is one of the companies. Uh, they have like 50 people, but they are noted on the Polish stock market in Warsaw. Uh, so these are the guys who developed Anomaly on their own engine. Uh, they developed this war of mine. Now they are working on Frostpunk. Uh, they were funded in 2009. Their CEOs previously worked in Metropolis Software House, then in CD Projekt because Metropolis was bought off by CD Projekt. And then actually they started the, their own company. Uh, currently, they have around 70 people. This war of mine on Steam, you can check Steam Spy, it has around 2 million copies on PC. They want to create uh, ambitious games, touching different topics. They are also a publisher. They have this 11-bit uh, launchpad program, so you can write them, show them your games, uh, ask them whether they want to publish it. Uh, they use own engines and also Unity, from what I remember. These are the guys. Artifex Mundi. So Artifex Mundi, the, the, these guys are based in uh, a region of Poland that we call Silesia. Uh, they are in Katowice. This company found, uh, found its niche in Hopa game. So it's hidden object puzzle adventure game. And actually, they are almost a monopolist when it goes uh, for these games. They published over 50 titles since uh, 2011, I think, for all possible platforms, including mobiles, uh, PC, consoles. They have the, their own engine Spark us used for uh, Hopa games. They also recently published a game called Bladebound. I don't know whether it's uh, available in Georgia because it was soft launched in some countries, it's a, a Diablo-like game for tablets and mobiles. Uh, you do special moves by uh, gestures on the touchpad, on the touchscreen. They also are the creators of MGEM, the, the gem I will be showing you a video of which. And they have over 150 people. And they are also noted on the Polish stock market. Hope this works. Oh. Oops, whoops. <laughs> Let's do it this way. Uh, 
I'll do it by hand. Actually, the gem is in their office. In 2015, there were eight teams or six teams. Now there were all, last year there were 12. And actually now the companies encourage uh, their teams to go over there to create something new. Yeah, and this is our team winning the competition. Actually, Michal, the guy with the bird, is the head of the Krakow studio now. Okay. So, Creative Forge Games, again, another company from Warsaw. Uh, there are around 50 people. They are uh, concentrating themselves on strategy games. So, first game was published with Paradox. Uh, they did Ancient Space, is something like Homeworld, maybe some of you played. Uh, the second one, Hard West, uh, is like XCOM, Enem Enemy Unknown, the new one, uh, but based in uh, Wild West. These guys are ex Techland, Wrocław. 
uh, programmers and they grew so much that we cannot like uh, now I cannot say that there are only Techland people. It's like they, they have 50 people now they started with probably 10 maybe less. Uh, they use Unity and Unreal Engine. Oh, actually they have a really nice office and they have a garden so we do often garden parties there. <laughs> Imagine Pro. Uh, this is one of our publishers in Poland. Uh, they do local publishing and global publishing. They do both digital and uh, retail. Uh, they are the guys who publish spin tires. Uh, they publish super hot in boxes for all around the world. They are also investing in game development and currently uh, with full theory they are developing a game called Seven. They are based in the also Silesia uh, and they are the publisher that goes almost to all events around the world. So E3, uh, they go to all PAXs, they go to Gamescom, they go to Tokyo Game Show. Ah, again, no picture, sorry. Uh, Techland. Techland actually is one of the oldest companies. They are over 25 years old. In this year, they will be 26. Last year, we were invited to, to their party for the 25th birthday. Uh, they are publishers and investors because they have Techland Publishing. Mm, they also publish for consoles. Uh, one of the games they published this year was Torment Tides of Numenara. It was totally published by Techland, both for PCs and consoles. Uh, they have over 20 games in their portfolio. So Chrome, Call of Juarez, the, there were four games in Call of Juarez series. Dead Island, Dying Light, uh, Expand Rally, loads of them. They are really experienced. They have their HQ in Wrocław, a second office is in Warsaw, and they also have one office in Canada, in Vancouver. Uh, they are one of the most successful Polish uh, developers and they are not noted on the stock market. They have over 350 people employed. And they use, for most of the games, they use their own engine, it's called Chrome Engine, written from scratch. Again, sorry, no picture. So, CD Projekt Red. Everybody knows this company probably. They are the guys who did The Witcher. Uh, they are working on Gwent, the, the uh, card game now. And actually, if there is no picture next, or oh, I will have to show you the picture because it's... <laughs> uh, they were established in 2002 as a developer. So previously, before that, they were a local publisher for foreign games, translating it to Polish. Uh, their greatest success was Heroes of Might and Magic 3 and uh, Baldur's Gate. This allowed them to uh, create a branch that de started developing games. Their fir first game was The Witcher. Uh, what else? They, or they are also the company that owns GOG. So good old games. So it's, GOG is also Polish. Uh, their HQ is in Warsaw. Second office is in Krakow and they have uh, one office in Los Angeles, California. They are now noted as the probably fourth big largest company on this Polish stock market. They are uh, worth even more than energetic companies. Uh, they have over 400 people working now either in their offices. Uh, for Witcher, they use their own engine. First it was Lava, then it was RedKit, and now it's Red Engine. Uh, Gwent is developed in, on Unity. I will show you because uh, I have this picture from 2003 when they were first showing uh, their game on one of the, uh, I don't remember whether it was E3 or Gamescom. I will show it to you later. Actually, this is only a part of the team. About our foundation, uh, we started it two years ago. Uh, the foundation is meant for helping out Polish Indies uh, going to expos and events that they cannot, uh, they don't have money to go to. Uh, we work with the government, so we work with our Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Development, Ministry of Commerce. Uh, we are getting the funds to send people over to the States. Uh, we send people over to Gamescom, to Germany, uh, into all possible 
directions. Last year we did probably eight, eight expos with the foundation. We also send people to Nordic Game Jam. Uh, we give them contacts to publishers if they need them. Uh, we are a non-profit organization. Each of us that are, uh, each of the people that are in the foundation have their own work, so we do it after hours. Uh, and we also organize Polish parties on all the major expos. So last year we did one uh, in the Polish Polish consulate in uh, Köln in Germany uh, during Gamescom and we also did one in Seattle for PAX. Oh, again, sorry, no picture. Uh, there are loads of companies emerging uh, like sideways from Gamescom. So they are around, uh, around ga uh, game dev, sorry. Uh, they are around game dev, not really creating games. So uh, Qlog is one of the companies that is porting games. They are working strictly for Capcom mostly. They did ports of Devil May Cry, uh, Street Fighter. They also have a localization service. They do localizations and QA. Uh, Mocha PL is a motion capture company. Uh, they did most of the animations for mockup animations for all the major titles. So they have Shadow Warrior 2 in their portfolio, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Like if you check their website, seriously, they have great portfolios. Uh, there are even more companies, but I won't have the time to talk about them. We have Lion Bridge, we have Testronic, and like 20 or more different kinds of companies that work around game dev. The events. Uh, so we have uh, like two major events that are, that are open for everybody and we have one uh, game dev only event. So the first one is uh, Poznań Game Arena and Game Industry Conference. Is, it's in Poznań. It's always in the last week of October. We'll show you how it looks like. It's also from two years ago. Oh. <sighs> I bet this one is in English. Here we are, Poznan Game Arena, the biggest Polish event for gamers, but also a very important one for the development. Industry. Last year there were 90,000 people coming over for three days. It is also the host of the Games Industry Conference. This is where more or less experienced developers share the know-how with, well, actually anybody who cares. You just need a regular PGA ticket and you can see all the lectures. This is sauce. Yeah, and he got one game that you have to Punch with your head on the keyboard. 
They destroyed 150 keyboards, one PGA. Seriously. And how many takes? Hmm? How many takes? <laughs> Polish gaming industry has gradually become a very significant share of the whole national economy. I would say that there's around 4,000 people actually creating games here and probably over 150 bigger or smaller companies. Of course, Polish games are more than just The Witcher or uh, Dying Light. We got hundreds of small or even tiny studios creating brilliant games that already got the world's attention. This is the composer for Witcher 3. Industry is growing at a surprising velocity and the evolution of events like PGA reflects that. Each year there's more visitors, more exhibit halls, and more games, and we're really just getting started. Okay, so this was PGA. Wait, 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 guys. <laughs> 